How's it going, fellow Detroit Red Wings fans? Back in 2018, the last draft of the Holland era, the Detroit Red Wings had the sixth pick, expecting to draft Evan Bouchard, Adam Boakvist, or maybe even Quinn Hughes. But somehow, the hockey gods graced us with a player who was supposed to be the best natural goal scorer of the draft, aside from Andrei Svechnikov. And well, the Detroit Red Wings jumped at the opportunity of drafting the young sniper, Philip Sedina. Detroit and its fans were ecstatic. Future 30 plus, 40 plus, maybe even 50 plus goal seasons coming soon from Zadina ran through the heads of most fans. Well, if you have seen his stat sheet, you know we have to talk about him. But before we get too far into today's video, I want to give a shout out to Randy Kane. We hit the 1000 subscriber mark a little bit ago, and we want to start thanking you guys for making the Revving Nation community a community. So if you want to get a shout out, make sure you subscribe and join lots of other Red Wing and hockey fans who are already subscribed to this channel. So let's talk about Zadina. The season after being drafted, he did make his NHL debut, recording his first goal and two assists in nine games played on a late season call up. While he didn't dominate like we had hoped, he did well, especially for being drafted not even a year ago and posting 16 goals along with 35 points playing in the AHL, it looked like he was about a season away from being a top six player consistently for the Detroit Red Wings. And for the most part, he kind of did. The next season, the COVID shortened season, Zadina earned his NHL spot recording eight goals, seven assists for 15 points in 28 games played. And then after that, he kind of fell off. Heading into Saturday's contest against the Los Angeles Kings, he has recorded 29 points through 81 games played between this season and the last season. So, obviously there's a big drop off in point production. I mean you're talking about going from a .535 points per game percentage to a .35 points per game percentage. From a guy who should at least be a top 6 forward by now. The last couple of seasons he has been adjusting to the NHL and both Eisenman and Blashill wanted him to become a better 200 foot player, which obviously is not his style of play. Zadina is a shooter playmaker, but he definitely has made significant strides in the right direction. Going from a minus five in his nine rookie games to a minus four through 49 games played last season is a big jump. Albeit this season has been rough, Heading into Saturday's contest, Zadina owned a minus 11. So it seems more this season than any other, he's not been producing much and not keeping the other team from scoring. Now, if you watch the Red Wings, you know that is not true. Zadina is one of our most hardworking and one of the more talented players on the roster. He just looks snake bitten. So what could be the cause aside from just bad puck luck? Well, it could actually be who he's paired with and a lack of chemistry between the players. P.S. Suter. Zadina has played the most with Suter, and well, looking at stats, the two players are better away from each other than together. Zadina has actually played his best hockey stat-wise when on the ice with Lucas Raymond. Not to mention the second line of Fabry, Suter, and Zadina may sound beautiful. I mean three high skill forwards who could make plays, score, and keep the puck out of the back of the net. But in actuality, three skill forwards creates an unbalanced line with no one to dig the puck out of the corners or corral the puck or really face the opponents like Tyler Bertuzzi does for the top line. It forces one of those players into that role, most of the time being Zadina. You can see the difference when a player more built for grinding out pucks, like Michael Rasmussen in a game against the San Jose Sharks, that second line came alive and was a big part of the win. Pia Suter had two goals, Robbie Fabry had a goal, and Michael Rasmussen had an assist. So what's wrong with Philip Sedina? I think it's more the situation. His advanced stats from this season are either the same or better than his more productive seasons. Like his 2019-20 season where he claimed a roster spot. A change of lines may help, and when Jacob Vrana does return, it could shake up the lines enough that Zadina can be put in a role he can thrive in. Also, just for stat watch, Lucas Raymond is three points away from catching Alexis Lafreniere, 
What do you think? Is Philip Sedina just having bad puck luck? Is this a sign of what's to come? Could he possibly be traded like Anthony Siu or Mantha were? Let us know down below. Red Wing Nation was designed to be a community of Red Wings fans that can come together and talk about all things Red Wings. If you like this video, make sure you drop a like. That way we make more content that you like. And lastly, if you are a Red Wings fan, if you are a hockey fan, if you are just a great person, make sure you subscribe and join lots of other fans of this great team and sport. Until next time, Lights on the Red Light District.